Welcome great people, hope you are having a wonderful day. Today's topic is how to easily set up a hosted server using PingPerfect. And what does this mean? Well, there are two ways in general to host a server. One way is to run a server on your own PC or extra PC if you're lucky enough to have that, but that costs you time and money. Upgrading the PC with more RAM and being able to play just any game you want because, well, the server is taking up resources so maybe you can play what you want to. And restarting the computer? Well, no, 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 that doesn't work so well either. And the electricity from running it 24-7, 365 is there as well and it adds up. The second is to offload all the server running headaches to a hosting provider, where they maintain the servers, you pay a rental fee. They have the machines in a data center, they handle the maintenance, network connectivity, and if something goes wrong, well, let's say the hardware breaks down, it's them spending hours getting things back up and running and not you. If you only play rarely with a couple of friends, having a local server works great. However, if you want to have people be able to log in anytime they want to, a hosted solution is always recommended. This video will show how easy it is to get it up and running and I will walk through the steps of getting the server ordered and then running on PingPerfect, which is a well-known high quality hosting provider for game servers. Full disclosure, this is not a paid for promotional video. Pink Perfect has not paid me to do this. I am, however, affiliated with them. And if you use my affiliate link and discount code, it does help to support my content. While it does give you a discount on your server rental as well. Win-win. I have been running game servers with Pink Perfect for years across multiple games such as Seven Days Die, Valheim, Ark, Conan Exiles, and uh, it's worked really well for me. And before we get into the meat of the video, I would like to thank everyone who support me, be it just watching or as channel members where you can join for cool perks, patron supporters or just being part of the great community. If you do enjoy my videos, it really does help if you just hit that thumbs up, maybe subscribe, ring the notification bell and all of that. I leave it up to you, but it's gratefully appreciated and it's free. I will also leave a link in the description below, so check that out. And if you use that with my discount code, you will get a 10% recurring, meaning every month, discount on your total bill for as long as you keep the server. And that's a really good deal. Clicking the link will take you here to the pinkperfect.com homepage. And if you just scroll down, you'll see a bunch of the different games that they actually support and some news and stuff like that, where the server locations is. And this is something that is really important, at least for me having, oh, actually my video is here. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I actually put my video here from yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, so they have a lot of server locations across the globe, which is really helpful to make sure that you have a location that is close to you and you see all the different type of servers they run and the discount code that I'm going to provide in the description should work for all of these ones if it doesn't let me know it just means that they've made some changes and I need to get them to re-add it so we're going to go up here to seven days tonight we're going to click that because that's what we're looking at and you can choose to do it in pound, USD or Euro. It's really up to you. If you scroll down a little bit here, you'll see some of the features. Instant server setup, it gets done automatically. The global locations, full backup system, which is really helpful. Enterprise hardware, it's of course not consumer hardware. Money back guarantee, free web hosting, FTP, free debranding. We'll get into that in a little bit. Customer support has been really good. You have the game panel, which makes administering it really simple. You can switch to different service if you want to, DDoS protection of course, desktop, mobile control panel, whichever way you want to log into and manage it. So we're going to do the USD one because that's what I usually access and it puts you on this main page. And if you look here on the right side, this is the summary of the order. And let me make that just a little bit bigger here. Summary of the order, which will change depending on which options you actually select. So let's go down here a little bit. If you select to pay, for instance, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, there will Will be a slight discount on that as well you'll see here 5 10 or 15 percent which can be helpful game slots this is the amount of slots that you have for concurrent players it's not total which means that 12 to 32 concurrent you could have hundreds and hundreds of players but you can only have this amount of people on at the same time so we're going to leave it at the basic 12 don't worry about team speak you're probably using discord location there's a lot of location they have the regular 
They have extreme performance. Extreme performance is higher quality servers, which are faster and better. Normally for, for server, just using the standard ones should be just fine. We're gonna choose, let's say Atlanta here. Now, all the time, the servers are on SSD or other services are running on an SSD. If you wanna have NVMe, you can pay a little bit extra for that. Branding, if you do select the Buy Pink Perfect Branding, you're gonna see we're gonna get a slight discount of 70 cent, which I think is useful. Memory, additional memory. If you're just running vanilla, you shouldn't have a major issue unless you make a really big map. If you're running mod packs, you might have to put on a little bit of extra RAM because some of the mod packs are really heavy when they run. So vanilla, keep it standard just as a start with. Later on, if you have a really big server or you're running mod packs, just uh, see how it runs. Maybe add on one, two or three GB. That's what I've been doing when I was running, for instance, Darkness Falls. CPU priority. I would really uh, just run it on normal priority. You could bump it up, but normally shouldn't have to. Support level, again, if you wanna have platinum set up, if you wanna have extra help, you can choose that or platinum support. Normally, if you know what you're doing and you should get enough information in this video, normal support should be it. Your host name, let's do Vedites. Let's call it that and let's have a password is Ved111. And if you're migrating from a different service, you can actually select the migration service. I'm not gonna do that because I'm just setting up a fresh. And here we see the cost it is, and we're gonna do continue. And this is where you do your review of what you have ordered. And it's 1262 in this case, and you'll see it's at the US Atlanta. You have the branding by Pin Perfect. You're just running normal SSD, no additional memory, etc. And this is where my promo code comes in. Type in Vedri, validate code, and bang! 10% recurring discount. So do a checkout, and it should take you to where you specify your details, of course, you have to fill in who you are because they're gonna be billing you if you're doing a company, a street address, all this kind of thing. And of course, where you're gonna be paying for it, which is gonna be down here. If you're paying by credit card and stuff like that, you can do PayPal, stuff like that as well. Make sure you are typing in your account security, your password, and write that down somewhere. I'll remember it so that you don't forget it. Of course, you can always ask them to reset it, but it's as simple if you don't. And once you have all this done, you just make sure you tick in. Yes, I've uh, read and agreed to the terms of service and hit complete order. And what's gonna happen after this is that that goes to the backend, it verifies the payment and everything, and it automatically starts to set everything up it will send you another email saying that, oh, it's all working, it's all ready for you to log in. But I'll show that in a little bit. All right, so if you go to your email that you put in, you should see an email that is something like this, that your order has been successful and that it's now installing. It also tells you to please do not attempt to log into the game panel prior to getting the emails as it can cause delays. What they're basically saying is that until you get the emails that the service is ready, don't go in and touch it because you might break something, things get delayed, they have to restart it and that's just gonna take you time. So don't do that. It does tell you everything that you've ordered, which is right. And then for me, it took literally four minutes until I got my next email, which basically said, hey, this server has been created. Here's the information and you'll see the IP and port and everything. Don't worry, don't try to log into this one. This is just a test server. So it shouldn't be running when you're watching this video. We're now ready to log into the pingperfect.com server itself and configure it and start up. The easiest way, just go to pingperfect.com and hit the login, which will take you to the login for the, your account. And here you're gonna be typing in your email address and the password that you already defined in the order and then hit login. And this will take you to basically where you admin your actual account, not the server itself. In order to get to that one, you click on your services and that pops up a listing of your different things that you have. You click on it like seven days to die here and that should bring you over to the details of, let's say you want to request a cancellation. If you want to change some configurable options, you then go to upgrade and downgrade options so you can actually do that. But let's go back here to the service details and you click login to control panel, which will then pop you into the control panel. What you're seeing now is your actual seven days to die server 
instance running through the game panel. Now it's already running because it generally starts with default configuration. So we're just going to stop that. It's really simple to, to actually manage it through here, which is really convenient for people, whether you are new at using it or if you are experienced at it, it's a very simple way of doing it. So we're stopping it. As you can see, it's working because it's shutting things down. And you can see there's a bunch of different things. And I will make a video in the future going more details of what all these things are. A few initial things that you need to keep in mind is starting and stopping, obviously, and configuration files. We're going to click configuration files and it'll bring you over to the different things you can actually change here. Now, the main one is pingperfect.xml, which is effectively the server config.xml, but it's using a configuration editor, which makes it a lot simpler. It also highlights that don't change the telnet password, so don't do that. And you will see here the different thing you want to do depending on which version we're going to set it to private. We're not going to show in the, in the server list because that allows people to try to log in everything. I don't want to do that. As far as password, we're going to do one, two, three, four. We're just going to look down to see here. What is all this thing? Twitch server permissions. We are doing the Twitch integration. We're not going to do that. The world setting are sort of important ones. We're going to do actually Navis gain here and just going to do ping perfect and i think it's 6k and game name again you can change this one difficulty how long the days are we're going to do 18 because that's usually what i play what you drop on death stuff like that blood moon frequencies every seven days there's a bunch of uh, configuration options in here you can play around with they're pretty straightforward to to just change and usually there are some tool tip that pops up telling you a little bit more about it depending on what the actual function is and i think that should be it if you want to have talented and stuff like that you can disable ac if you don't need it and we're going to disable talent we don't need that either and we're just gonna do a save if you want to add yourself as an admin which you probably want to do on your own server you go to the ping admin and then you hit that configuration editor here and then you can basically just add on your steam 64 id if you want to add uh, yourself and if you want to get that you can go to like steam 64 id finder stuff like that or steamid.io slash lookup where you can find out what this number is for your steam user i'm just going to leave it as it is i'm going to go back to my game service and we're going to start it and it will work a little bit and if you chose a random world generated mapping rwg it will take some time for it actually to generate it and that takes longer i would suggest start just start with the pre gen zero 2 or start with navis gain just to make sure you can log in what happens now is that it loads things in you'll see the memory if i do refresh it should actually increase the memory the cpu is going to be pulling a little bit more because it's loading generating things and getting things ready for you so while this is happening, I'm going to go through just a couple of other quick things. The important thing for connecting is the connection info. This is the IP and port that you need to input in the game client itself. And I will show that in just a little while. You see these ones are changing, which is good, is as it should be. If you have questions, going to the knowledge base is a usually a very good way of doing it because they have a lot of information about the different services. If you don't quite know what to do, whether it's for the servers, the game panel, the building and stuff like that if you really run into issues that you can't resolve going to get support is very very useful it allows you to raise a ticket to the support department where you can specify the problems you're having and ask them for help and if you want to see what's happening we can hit the log view here and we're going to do uh, download if we can get actually see what's happening we're going to do okay and it looks something like this and it'll be all this information and we're basically waiting for start game that it's done that the game server in it is successful which means it should be running and you can see here it is running navis game so i'm going to try to log in and just like i showed the information you need is this so you can actually just copy it i'm going to copy it and then you start your game and we're now in seven days to die vanilla this is 19.6 but pretty much all versions work exactly the same way you hit join game and you connect to ip you copy that in and you see that it's the correct ip import we do a connect and invalid password and that's a good question what was the password and that's actually something you need to make sure that you have well that you remember what it is and i don't remember offhand what it is so let me go check oh okay i put one two three four five one two three four 
five. And of course, one, two, three, four, five, submit. And it says connecting, receiving, loading configs, and come on game. So what I would always suggest people doing when you're trying to start up a new server, whether it's a dedicated locally or hosted one, do something very simple. Don't change a lot of the configs because you want to make sure that the server comes up, even if it's a server you're not going to play on, just with Navis game, for instance, or pregen 2 and that you can actually log into it. Once that is working, then you know that the basic stuff is there. You have a server, you know how to connect. Then you can go back changing things up, changing to a different randomly generated world. You can install your mods, you can play around with the different settings, but at least you know that it's working. And it says, welcome to another Pink Perfect server. Enjoy your stay. We're going to continue. We should be logging in here. And you can see we are. We are in the game, basics of survival, and well, there you go. We are in the game, and I could be playing. Why would I find a paintbrush? I have no paint. That sucks. That's a really bad find. I could at least give me a, an axe or something. So you see, this is how simple it is. We are now on our own game server. Our seven days that I hosted game server on pinkperfect.com. Of course, we are playing on Navis game. And this is really how simple it is. And once you get this up, there'll be a lot of things you can do to just play around with it, make a different kind of world, play different mods and just knock yourself out invite your friends i would always suggest make sure you put a password on your server keep the ip in port just to you and your friends don't you know, don't share it unless you really have to that, that way you don't get griefers and just go and enjoy it and if you want to run other game servers than seven days tonight it's pretty much the same way of setting it up ordering it and then configuring it depending on what game it is and my discount code and affiliate link works the same way so go try it out Hopefully this video gives you the confidence to just get into it and getting your own server. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure hit that like button, hit that subscription, and of course the ring the notification bell and all that. If you have any questions, well, why don't you write that in the comment section below of the video. I'll have some links in there as well in the description, so go check them out. And I'll see you again next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.